This example is going to cover two types of chi-square for Dr. B's Psych 200 course for the Nolan and Heidson statistics for the behavioral sciences. Uh, we're going to do the six-step process to analyze both a goodness of fit chi-square and an independence chi-square. Okay, so for the first example, uh, we're going to look at a goodness of fit test. And so we're looking at statistics textbooks because they're wildly exciting to determine how the photos in them are used to enhance learning. So before they even started to do that, they classified the photos into categories. So we've got like applied kinds of pictures, um, textbook straight information pictures, like here is a scatter plot, statistical graphing kind of pictures, and unrelated cat pictures. So is there a difference in the types of pictures that people include so that then they can test if they're going to enhance learning? All right, so here's the data. So we have 12 applied pictures, 20 textbook pictures, 45 statistical pictures, and seven other kinds of pictures. And I pick on uh, cat pictures because there's a really great statistics book that has full of cat pictures. <clears throat> and so let's start with step one. Okay, so that is our assumptions. Okay. So the first one is that there aren't too many small ends. So at least 50% of the categories have uh, more than five people. So if we look at our data, everything has more than five people, so it's okay. Second one is that there are no zeros, and that's also okay. So no zeros in the data set. Step two is to use the, uh, what is the variable involved? So this is a goodness of fit. So there are, uh, there is only one variable. So we got the type of photos that we're using. So we're going to say that the observed values in the book don't match the expected values. There's more of one type than the other. The observed values in the book do, do match the expected values. Um, and so if the ex observed values match the expected values, then all the types of pictures are the same, like they're using the same uh, amount of each type. If the values are not the same, then they're using more of one type than another. So step three is to write down your O and E values. So I got 12, 20, 45, and seven. My E here, I would expect them all to be equal. So the grand total out here is 84. I think if I've done my math correctly. Right, <clears throat> and then I would split that into four categories. So 21, 21, 21. 21. Okay, so I would do 84 divided by 4, which would be 21. So those are my E values. So for degrees of freedom, I have four categories, minus 1, so it's categories, minus 1. So I have 4, let's use 0 0.05, so it's 9.488. Oh, sorry, it's 4 minus 1, good gracious. So that means it's 3. So three, it's 7.815. Okay. So three degrees of freedom because there are four categories. So enter this into Vasker Stats website. So be sure you enter these values and then these values. It tells you your observed and expected frequencies. And then here's chi-square right here. So chi-square is 4067. And we got three degrees of freedom. So we did that part right, or I did the second time anyway. So is that significant, uh, significantly different, or do we reject the null? So our cutoff score was 7.815, and we're way over here at 40.67, so we definitely are going to reject the null and say that there's a significant difference in the categories. So I'm going to back up a second and look at how different are my categories here. So I'm looking at these numbers, um, I can tell that this one is probably way more than expected and this one's way less than expected. You can also use these values out here. Uh, so remember that these are z-scores, so 1.96 is a good cutoff score. And so anything over or under that is uh, much larger or smaller than you would expect. But you can also just kind of see it. 45 is much bigger than 21. So they're including a lot more statistical pictures than they are sort of other pictures, which makes sense because these are stats books. All right, our other example is for a good independence test. 
So an independence test is one where you have um, two variables at once instead of just one. And so I'm going to look at um, the community a person lives in related to their um, opinion on this water conservation ballot. So this is sort of going on in California right now uh, where they're having to initiate water conservation. And so let's look at the data here. So I've got the number of people who are for or against or they just don't know yet. And then um, <clears throat> the three types of community. So I have two variables, community and opinion. And so that's what makes an independence test. And then let's test and see if there's a, uh, a significant difference across communities on opinions. So the first step is small n. So this is assumptions. Sorry. So small n, let's back up one. So I've got one, two that are less than um, five, but that's two out of nine. So seven out of the nine are okay. So I think I'm okay because most of them are greater than five. And then zeros, we don't have any zeros, so we're okay. Step two is to write the two variables out. So we've got community and voting. Okay. I've got O is our expected values are not equal to our um, observed values and our observed values are equal to our expected values. Okay. So we're saying that there's a relationship between community and voting and then there's not a relationship. O values over here. So we've got 12, 18, 12, 6, 3, 9, 3, 15, 12. Okay, so you'd create row and column totals. So, ooh, ah, what happened? 21, 36, 33, and then 42, 18, and 30. That makes the grand total 90 people. And then we would create our E values from those. So the first one, I would take 21 times 42 divided by 90. Okay, so 21 is this one here by 42 divided by 90. We'll do that for all of them. I'll just tell you what the numbers are, but that's how you calculate it. So it's 9.8, 4.27. Okay, so that total should still be equal to 21 over here. 16.8, 7.2, and 12. 15.4, 6.6, and 11. And you can make sure you've done that right because the row and column total should still be the same. So a quick check, is this column 30? And it is. Okay, so these are my E values. So I'm expecting seven people in this box, but I only have three. So that's gonna make this number, um, that's gonna make a big difference. So for step four, we're gonna talk about degrees of freedom. It's columns minus one times rows minus one. Okay. So that's three minus one times three minus one. That's four, can math on this one. Okay, so for degrees of freedom for four, for 0.05 is 9.488. I used Vassarstaff's website to calculate chi-square. So I entered all my numbers here. Here's chi-square. I've got the right degrees of freedom. So chi-square is 8.55. So is that significant? Is there a relationship between community and voting? So reject out here. We're at 8.55 here. So no, we would fail to reject. So there's not a relationship between the two, which means that all the communities are voting in the same way, or they're telling people they're gonna vote in the same way, or there's the same number of people in the for category across communities, in the against category across communities, and et cetera. Okay. <clears throat> so when you fail to reject, you're saying that the, the values are what you would expect if everything were perfectly equal. Now let's talk effect size. We're gonna do Kramer's V or Phi here, and that is here. So 0.22, um, and remember that that's calculated by taking the square root of chi-square divided by n times df small, and continue, let's back up for a second, df smaller 
remember is uh, which one is smaller, rows minus one or columns minus one. And in this case, they're the same thing. And so we would say that it would be chi squares, so 8.55 divided by n, which is 90 times two. Okay, take the square root of that. So that's how they're getting this number down here. So 0.22, which is about a medium effect size, um, but you would need a table to be able to look that up. So that is all the different types of chi-square for um, Dr. B's Psych 200 course.